So, I guess I, I started a company about eight years ago, and um, my background is science and electronics. And I kind of, I, I worked for a startup for four years, and then I left. And I left thinking that I was this really clever scientist that knew how to look at how to print transistors and make technology in a different way. So I set up in my garage, turned it into a lab, and I started printing these transistors, which were really, really cool. And then um, I would go to companies who would make products, and I'd tell them what I was doing. And they'd say, so how long is this going to take? And I'd say, five to seven years, because that's how long R&D takes. And their response was, come back in five to seven years, or maybe just don't come back at all. And that was like, that was really quite a shock for me, because I thought, you know, I'd done some really clever stuff, and that once I'd done that, the whole world would want it. And what I've kind of realized looking back now is that, like, I was, like, there with my science, and that people who I would meet were kind of, like, over there. And then, and this has happened, like, all the way through. I think I kind of know what I'm doing, and then I go out and talk to people, and then use the magical word kind of, of empathy and listen to people and realize that what I'm doing is a million miles away from where people are and having anything useful. And so after that interaction, that sort of like um, empathetic um, interaction, I move a little bit more towards them. But their vision of the future and what technology can be is kind of like up there. And after their interaction with me and people like me, they kind of move a little bit like that. So I think over eight years of me creating stuff that's been pretty useless, there's kind of like been this emotional, iterat iterative path like that. And I think eight years later, things are starting to overlap, which is really, really exciting. And um, I've now realized overnight success takes about 10 years. So if it happens now, I'm about two years ahead of schedule. <laughs> so, um, and what, what, what I'm really about is I really like the idea of technology disappearing. And I just sort of believe that almost like one day we'll wake up and it will just have gone. And it will have gone to within um, just everything around us. And um, I tried to think of an analogy for this. And what I thought of was a flower. So you kind of you know, have this beautiful flower that, that a botanist sees all of the science and a bee sees all of the nectar and maybe an artist sees all of the beauty and they might all argue about what they're looking at because they're seeing three totally different things but what that is it's just perspective and we all have different perspectives of things and so much with technology it's just one perspective and it doesn't really embrace so often art and design and and human interaction at all and that kind of like just made me realize just thinking about it i think yesterday that if we see something with only one dimension, then technically it doesn't actually exist. And if it doesn't exist, it kind of really has no purpose um, as even trying to pursue it. So when I started out, the first person that I hired was a graphic designer because I, I, mean, I couldn't even draw um, a flag for my bike. I really am not creative at all. I'm just creative with technology. And so like, my whole journey has been working, working with creative people. Um, so I believe that technology should be kind of like, like the DNA within things and not really be what, what something is about. And if we see the technology and we, if we see the structure of it, it should kind of like be seeing the grain in wood and you know, seeing how that is beautiful. So we might see the structure of a, of a bridge or something. Um, and then maybe in using technology, it's not like having buttons and screens and dials and things all around us that are kind of like separate to us like a watch. I think if our environment can change and technology can be within, then maybe we could tell the time instead of looking at our watch, but kind of more like how we used to tell the time from knowing where the sun is in the sky. Maybe just objects around us change with time or things around us change in some very subtle way that we kind of use and we don't even know that, that we're using. Um, so what I actually do, which I guess is what I'm supposed to talk about, and I have no idea of time at all, so... <laughs> um, what I actually do is I print capacitive touch using conductive inks. So kind of like the touch sense that you get on an iPhone or an iPad. And I print that um, on paper or plastic using regular printing presses and using inks that anyone can use anywhere in the world. So using screen print, offset litho, um, or flexo. 
Um, and print is an amazing process. It's like one of the only ways of manufacturing that we can manufacture things in huge volumes, probably higher volume than anything else, um, and where we can, we can manufacture a huge range of products that are totally different. And we can make things like newspapers that are obsolete the following day. So, and it's a process that's been around for a long time. Um, so I have to keep looking at my notes. <laughs> um, and I guess, you know, so what I do is I, I print cap touch and then I make a small, small circuit board with some chips on um, that runs some software. And it's basically an Apple II on a little circuit board with a Bluetooth chip on there as well. And that sticks onto the paper. So like any surface can become interactive. So you could, if you want to change the lights, you could just swipe your hand on the wall. If you want to play some music, you can just touch a poster. And I have some demos, so I'll hopefully try and show them in a moment. But my job is not to create these products. Am I late? Oh, OK. <laughs> Um, my job is like I see to create a platform and it's kind of like making bristles for paintbrushes and pigments for paint that an artist and designers can use and I want to create a platform that anyone can use anywhere in the world and I kind of you know think about some of the most prolific products like you know a tablet it's designed by kind of an elite group of people it's made by a million people in China and it's available in black and white and there's so much more to the world than black and white. So, you know, I see we can create platforms where local people can design their local products and they can print them or create them with local manufacturing. Then our job is to design these platforms and let people around the world create their own products. And we can actually do that with, with regular print. Um, okay, so I'll show some demos, I think. Okay. I have no idea how my time is. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys having a good time listening to Kate? <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> Thank I think you. you're just fine. Okay. I have a few things to show. So. So that's a poster that can play music. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and last time I spoke, I had to show off my niece, Charlotte, and so I had to show off again. <laughs> and, and I'm kind of working with her on how, how, a music, how a musician can express things differently using things that have been around for a long time. Bands always have posters. Posters have graphics but they don't make music, and artists make music. So she can leave this somewhere where she's going to play, and people can hear samples of her music. Um, OK. Um, have some drums as well. I think I'm going to actually show something else next. Maybe not the drums. I'll do the drums after that, because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> OK. This is something that is really, really new. So we literally made this within a few days. This was designed and made within a few days before I came and was given to me in this envelope just before I um, got on the plane in London. So I've kind of kept trying to keep it away from all the plier dust. <laughs> um, and it might just take me a moment to make it do something. She's checking her email. Yeah. <laughs> Just bear with me for a second. I hope it works. Okay. So basically, it's um, it's a regular book. And it was made with a company who make really beautiful books. So it feels really nice. It has a lovely texture. And it has foiling on it and front and back. And I love the fact that it really smells like a book, which is really cool. And it has beautiful pages. And it has um, all of Charlotte's lyrics for her songs. But then there's a page in it here um, that connects to my cell phone. So, so I can play some different tunes. <laughs> Thanks. So, what, it's still too loud. <laughs> I need a volume control. <laughs> um, yeah, so what, what I really like is just, it's a real book. 
and kind of like people want to give money to musicians. They kind of like need a reason to do it. So we kind of created this book, and we, most of us still really love real books and don't really necessarily want to buy you know, our music the way we do, or maybe for something special. And this also has the has this CD in it as well. But it's a beautiful book. And um, some of the buttons on it are, it will play a latest song, it can link to a, a YouTube video, it could link to a new video that maybe she's just done that week. Um, it can go to Facebook, it can do any of those things. It just links through the internet in your pocket. So the idea is you could buy a book at an event, and maybe the contents of that book haven't actually happened yet. Maybe there are interviews that are going to happen during the year, or new music that's going to come out. And it's kind of like, it's just a way of directly connecting the person listening to the music, the fan, with the artist. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of like what that's about. And it's just, it, it really, I think, to me, really summed up what I was trying to do, of just having the technology disappear into, like, an everyday object. That's an example of that. Okay. Can anyone play drums? <laughs> Who can play this? I can't play drums. If anyone wants to play drums, then no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at the moment, it's only single touch. But if we put the microphone behind. <laughs> so, again, that's just kind of like an example of what I'm trying to do. It's a regular poster. We just print some conductive ink on the back. We stick a little circuit board on the back, and this one has some bigger batteries. And the whole poster itself is the speaker. There's no speaker. The whole poster shakes, so you can actually feel the sound. So, yeah, that's kind of like my story, really. That's like my philosophy and what I do. <laughs>